This is amazing. Now we have Graph Rag from Microsoft. This is one of the best rag system I've seen so far. So what is rag and why we need rag? So all the large language models don't have every information in the world. So when we ask a question which is not relevant, it is not able to answer correctly. But when we provide relevant context to the large language model, it is able to respond accurately. That is rack system or retrieval augmented generation. So the information what we provide decides the quality of response we get from the large language model. So the better the context, better the response. So there are different rack system available. The basic rack system is that when you ask a question, based on the question, we do semantic search and pull the relevant information and send it to large language model. But there is an advanced version which improves the quality of response. That is graph rag. So let's take this as an example. You have a private data set. Generally for rag process, you divide the data into chunks and then do semantic search against the database. That is basic rag. But semantic search is not that relevant because it doesn't know the meaning between entities. That's when we have graph rag. Same as before, we divide that into chunks. Then we extract useful information such as the entities and how they are related, whether they are closely related or further related. It is similar to semantic chunking, but it's more advanced in regards to information extraction and identifying the relationship between them. So when a user asks a question, we can provide more relevant context to give high quality answer. But to increase that quality further, we can even combine this with semantic search rag. And further, we can implement pre-existing relationships created by communities. And using that, we are able to give much more meaning to the context. Using this, we are able to create high quality data set, high quality summarized Q&A and much more. Apart from just entity detection, you got much more than that. Hierarchy extraction, graph embedding, entity summarization, community summarization, topic detection, representation learning. By the end of this video, you will learn how you can implement this in your own application like this to extract entities and get high quality answers. Gladly, Microsoft open sourced graph rag. Using this, you are able to easily integrate this advanced rag system in your own application. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about graph rag. As you can see in this image, you are able to identify different entities and how they are related with each other. Using a bulk amount of data, you are able to fine tune or extract useful information and make your chatbot more accurate. I'm going to take you through step by step how you can implement this in your own application as a beginner's guide and you can extend this from there. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. We can see in this graph rag paper, a graph rag and naive rag. The graph rag is much more detailed in answers compared to the base rag. So even when we see here, when we don't use the community information, just the basic graph rag, that is graph rag using local search. But when you include community-based graph extraction, this is called graph rag with global search. So we are going to see graph rag with local search and graph rag with global search. So first step, pip install graph rag and then click enter. This will install the main required package. Export the graph rag API key like this. This is the OpenAI API key. After this, click enter. For now, I'm going to show you how you can integrate the chat GPT that is OpenAI model, but there are options where you can integrate Grok or Olama together, which I will be covering later. I'm going to create a folder called input, mkdar input and click enter. Even you can use that from VS Code. Just open this in VS Code. Here you can click this icon to create the input folder like this. Now inside that, I'm going to put a text and here is the text file which I've added. So if I open it, you can see a project titled A Christmas Carol author Charles Dickens and you got more information in this whole article or the book. The whole thing I'm going to feed that to graph rag. So as you can see the folder structure inside the input folder I've got book.txt where I got this text. You can have your own data in this file 
and it could be any data. Now we are going to convert this to graph and then ask questions. To do that, I'm coming back to my terminal, python hyphen m, graph rag dot index, hyphen hyphen init, hyphen hyphen root and dot. So init is for initializing the project, hyphen hyphen root is to tell that this is the current directory where you can find the input folder. After this, click enter. You can see the project got initialized. Now if I open the VS code, here is a folder structure where you got prompts, output, input, .env file, settings.yaml. So .env file, that's where you can define your OpenAI API key. But for now, we have already set up on the environment variable. So I'm going to leave it as it is. You can change the model name in settings.yaml file. There you can choose GPT-40 or anything of your choice. Here you can even try Olama by changing this API base to this URL and you can even try adding your API version here. I haven't tried this, but it's worth for you to try. Similarly, you can integrate this with Grok. Same like this, you can replace this with Grok endpoint. For Olama, you might need to add slash v1 to mention the version. So that is the key difference to use different large language models. For now, I'm going to use GPT-40. You have other settings as well here. You can set the embedding model. Now we are setting text embedding three small, but you can change this. You can see the chunk size. You can try changing this based on your data type. You can see the input folder that is input. You can even modify this. That's why we initially created a folder called input and we added all our files there. So that is in TXT format. If you're adding markdown, you might need to modify this to MD. Then you got different folders, reporting, entity extraction folder, summarized description. So the prompts you can see here, community report you can see here, local search and global search, as I mentioned before. Now, if I go into the prompts, you can see the community report prompt explained here. So in this way, we are telling the large language model how to extract community information from the data. It's very detailed. Similarly, we got entity extraction, then we got summarized description. So everything is pre-built. Now we are going to run the code. The way we do is go to our terminal. Last time we added INIT, so this time I'm not going to use that. Just graph rag dot index and then root folder is the current folder. That's why I mentioned dot. If you're going to a different folder, you can mention the folder name here. After this, click enter. Now you can see it automatically dividing those two chunks. We mentioned in the settings 300 tokens, totally 230 chunks divided. Now it's graph rag indexer, loading the input and extracting entities. Now summarizing entities, it's using the same prompt which I showed before. So going through each and every chunk, then it's creating relationships between different identified entities like Charles Dickens, a Christmas Carol. This is very detailed. Next is generating relationship IDs. So you can see the progress here, different steps carried out. And finally, it's creating the final community reports, which is used for global search. So with community reports, it's global search. Without community reports, it's local search. Now it's all completed. All workflows completed successfully. Now if I open this in VS Code, you can see there's a new folder called output. There you got different folders, artifacts, reports, and the log file. So all knowledge graph has been created. Now we can ask questions. So step number one is indexing the document. So that is done. Now we can ask questions. Let's do it. Let's come back to our terminal. So same as before, graph rack dot query instead of index, now it's query, hyphen hyphen root, then dot current folder, then adding hyphen hyphen method global. That means global search. Now we are ready to ask questions. And here is the question. What are the top themes in this story? So that is the story which we uploaded. I'm going to click enter. Now it's performing graph rag. And here is the final answer. Top themes in the story. Transformation and redemption. Familial love support. Generosity and charity. And also it's giving a reference from where it has been taken. This is quite in-depth compared to the regular rag you see. Now let's do local search. So instead of method global, I'm using method local and asking this question, asking about this person and what are his relationships and then click enter. And here is a local search response. And this is not using community answers, 
or community summaries so that this can be focused more on the uploaded data rather than the overall picture. So global search gives us a wider picture, local search gives us a more focused picture. I showed you two commands to run global search and local search using terminal, but you can even add this to your program. But rather than adding this to your program, you can even add it like this, which I'll be covering that in the upcoming video. This is going to take the rack to the next level. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.